For some people, their earliest exposure to motorcycles is through movies. There's no denying that for some, the most impactful cultural moments for riders have stemmed from the portrayal of motorcycling in movies. So without further ado, let's look at the 10 of the most iconic motorcycles from movies. One of the clearest examples of the way in which a movie impacted the trajectory of culture of motorcycling is the movie The Wild One from 1953. In this film, Marlon Brando's character Johnny and his motorcycle club wreak havoc on some towns in California. This movie is loosely based on the 4th of July riots, riots in quotation marks by the way, which happened in 1947 in Hollister, California during the AMA motorcycle rally. The reports of this riots were highly sensationalized and made way for the perception of the 1% motorcycle clubs who operate on the fringes of society and exist solely to drink, fight, and cause destruction wherever they go. This outlaw biker lifestyle began to be quickly associated with Harley Davidson, although somewhat ironically, Marlon Brando rides a 1950s 6T Triumph Thunderbird in the film. Triumph made the Thunderbird from 1949 until 1966, and the Thunderbird used a version of the speed twin engine that was bored out to 650cc to make more power for the American market, where small displacement roadsters didn't have the appeal they had in Europe. It had a four-stroke parallel twin engine that made about 35 horsepower, and this entire motorcycle weighed less than 400 pounds wet, which is pretty impressive. Despite the help with the brand notoriety, apparently Triumph's importing partners weren't super happy with the producers of the film due to the negative portrayal of motorcycle riders of the time. So this right here is a pretty legendary bike. But another movie that got motorcycles into the hearts and minds of otherwise oblivious moviegoers is the original Top Gun. In Top Gun, Tom Cruise uses the power of flight to spread the good word of Scientology. Oh wait, that's not the that's not what he does. Tom Cruise goes to aviation Hogwarts to get better at flying and impress the girl. Not a particularly complex storyline, but the visual effects and sound design made it a pretty iconic movie of the time. In this movie, Tom Cruise rides a Kawasaki GPZ 900R, the original ninja, and is likely the only reason suburban normies around the world would have any perception of what a ninja is. It is either from this movie or because of their high school dropout nephew with four kids that rides a Ninja 250 with the muffler chopped off. Kawasaki released the GPZ 900R in 1984, and it completely redefined what a modern sport bike of the day was. It had a liquid-cooled 16-valve 908cc inline-4 engine that produced 115 horsepower and 63 foot-pounds of Top Gun officially licensed merchandise. GPZ 900R Ninja was the first stock motorcycle to exceed 150 miles per hour. While being a sport bike, the Ninja had pretty comfortable ergonomics that made the platform incredibly popular for street use as well. Still to this day, the Ninja is one of the most iconic motorcycle platforms, recognizable to riders and non-riders alike, and its use in Top Gun shortly after its inception no doubt played a part in that. In Top Gun Maverick, Tom Cruise actually rides a Ninja H2, which is a cool side-by-side -side to see how the Ninja platform has evolved between 1986 and today, where basically Kawasaki just lost all their marbles and made the H2 of today. New Age cinema, specifically films from the mid to late 60s, usually share many themes of cultural disillusionment, and the 1969 film Easy Rider is no exception. In this film, Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda play two bikers traveling through the American Southwest in search of some sort of ethereal meaning. During this journey, you see the dichotomy of conservative small-town America against the counterculture of the youth, and lots of drug use. In this movie, both characters ride custom choppers. Easy Rider was pivotal in making chopper-style motorcycles, which was previously a specific subculture, popular around the entire world. The Easy Rider choppers were built by two builders in California, Clifford Vaughs and Ben Hardy, who actually didn't receive any credit for their bikes in the film. Can you believe these Hollywood elite? Dennis Hopper rode a custom 1950 Harley-Davidson Hydroglide that was purchased from a police auction before being custom-built by Vaughs and Hardy. The famous Captain America chopper ridden by Peter Fonda was also based off of a panhead hydroglide, but little beyond the engine state original. The bike was destroyed in the end of the film, but originally was rebuilt and eventually auctioned for $1.3 million. There are plenty of other rumors of people claiming they were sold the original bike at different dates, but who knows. Are you a motorcycle nerd who likes to drift far out into the ethereal nether regions of motorcycle culture? Do you like spending 10 minutes watching a video about the best movie motorcycles throughout history? Then you should sign up for a membership at yamanoob.co. Our community of riders has deep appreciation for all the esoteric and nonsensical aspects of motorcycling. From memes to cursed project bikes to anime references, not only does a membership get you access to our exclusive Discord server, you'll also get exclusive content and behind the scenes looks, like the ability to access the Yamcam Live 
live stream where you can interact with me directly. And memberships earn automatic entries to win one of our giveaway motorcycles. Discord winners who have won our bikes have given the opportunity to fly out to Austin and hang out with us at the shop, which has been super, super cool. If you like what we do here on the channel and you want to be a bigger part of our community, head over to yamadude.co and see which membership tier is the right fit for you. Now back to the video. The second earliest film on this list is The Great Escape starring Steve McQueen. Before John Rambo was jumping his XT250 or Arnold's bottoming out a fat boy while jumping into a drainage ditch, The Great Escape was noted for having one of the most impressive motorcycle stunts to be ever in a film at the time. This movie is about allied soldiers imprisoned in a German POW camp during World War II who are intent on escaping. In one scene, Steve McQueen gets a hold of German military motorcycle and rips it around off-road before his character jumps it over a barbed wire fence. McQueen did all of his own riding in this film except for that final jump which was performed by a stuntman. This riding was done on a 1961 Triumph TR6 trophy that was disguised to look kind of like a BMW R75 that was used by the German military. The Triumph TR6 was kind of a proto scrambler and a predecessor to the modern scramblers made by Triumph currently. It's pretty crazy the confidence Steve McQueen had sliding around in the dirt on one of these things with absolutely zero gear on in the movie. People were just built different in the 60s. They did not care. They did not live as long. Steve McQueen even did a lot of the riding as his German pursuant in the film, as it was difficult to find riders that were as good as him at the time. Fun fact about Steve McQueen, he would also join in races uh, like hair scrambles using a different name because his promoters and managers did not want him racing on the weekends, so just kind of a badass all around. Another super iconic motorcycle moment in film history is a Harley Davidson fat boy ridden by Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. In Terminator 2, there are good robots and bad robots, and Arnold has to protect the kid from Detroit Rock City from getting killed by the evil global tech conglomerate. It doesn't really matter. What matters is the film was a huge success and people were able to see Arnold kicking ass atop of a big bad Harley. The Harley Davidson fat boy debuted in 1990, the year prior to the T2's release, and so it was still pretty new when the movie came out. And since then, it has been a pretty popular bike you can still find on the showroom floor today. The fat boy lives on on the soft tail frame and is instantly recognizable by its large profile tires, solid cast wheels, and large diameter forks. In 1990, the fat boy was powered by a 1340cc Evo engine that according to the internet made around 50 horsepower and 70 foot pounds of torque. It also weighed like 660 pounds, so with Arnold Schwarzenegger on the back of this thing, it's hard to believe that he was able to catch up to that semi truck. Also, he jumps it off like 10 foot of ledge. It's pretty crazy. You know a movie has a profound effect on motorcycles place in popular culture when the manufacturer then releases a special edition of the motorcycle in its honor. You know what it is, I'm talking about the Ducati 996 from The Matrix Reloaded. I shouldn't have to explain what The Matrix is, it's a great series and everyone should see it, but for those who haven't been red-pilled yet, get it? Keanu Reeves takes a pill to see how far the rabbit hole goes, he learns kung fu, shoots some guns, hangs out with Morpheus, kills some bad guys to save humanity from the technological overlord. Pretty straightforward, right? So in the sequel, Matrix Reloaded, they do more of that, but the bad guys have dreadlocks this time. Also, his female counterpart Trinity rides a super cool green Ducati 996 whilst saving the world. The Ducati 996 was based off of the already iconic 916 superbike and shared many of the same recognizable design choices like the twin underseat exhaust, single-sided swing arm, and square headlights. The 996 had a 996cc L twin engine that made 100 112 horsepower. This motorcycle was so recognizable in the Matrix that the subsequent models, the 998 Superbike, came out in a limited Matrix colorway to match the bike in the movie. A 2004 998 Matrix edition sold at auction for just shy of 12 grand, which I feel like is kind of a steal, honestly. The same year The Matrix Reloaded came out, Quentin Tarantino released part one of Kill Bill. Man, the early 2000s had some real bangers, didn't it? It wasn't just Iron Man 10 or Ant-Man and Lava Girl sucking on the Infinity Stone for three hours on an IMAX screen. Anyway, in Kill Bill, Uma Thurman goes on a revenge spree in her pursuit of killing Bill, hence the name of the movie. After she arrives in Japan, she is seen ridden a small yellow sport bike, a Kawasaki ZZR250, aka Ninja 250. The Ninja 250 has been made in some incarnations since 1986, though today in different markets around the world, but the bike from this movie is known as the ZZR250. It features a dainty 238cc P-twin engine that makes just 40 horsepower and 23 foot-pounds of torque. This motorcycle isn't super fast, nor is it even used in a chase scene in the movie, but riding on a yellow custom sport bike that matches her iconic yellow jumpsuit in Tokyo is just a whole vibe. One of the motorcycle scenes with the most impressive riding is in Rambo First Blood. In this movie, Sylvester Stallone is a war vet who gets triggered by some crappy small town cops and enacts guerrilla warfare in the forests of Washington state. 
Anyway, during one scene, he is pursued by a police car and steals a motorcycle, a Yamaha XT250, and then proceeds to rip around town, do wheelie, slide around corners, and jump over fences. It has some of the best motorcycle stunts in any movie for sure, and the bike he rides is super iconic as well. The XT platform and dual sport motorcycles were widely popular for off-road rally races during the 70s and 80s, and the XT250 rode in the film was powered by a 249cc air-cooled single that was making around 22 horsepower while weighing just 270 pounds fully wet, which is actually more powerful than the modern XT250 made today. Crazy. These bikes were super popular, and as they became larger and more capable for long-distance adventure touring, they made way for new adventure-type bikes like the Tenere 700. I've got two contemporary indie hits in the last two spots in today's list. The second to last is the dual sport bikes in The Place Beyond the Pines. In this movie, Ryan Gosling is a hot carny with face tattoos who robs banks on his motorcycle in an attempt to get his baby mama to love him again. Seriously, that's the whole plot. He uses two different motorcycles in this movie that are both modified and look like crusty old dual sports. One is a Honda CRF 230L with some aftermarket plastics, and one is a DRZ 400 with some Honda plastics and ultimately black spray paint. Apparently, Ryan Gosling did a lot of his own riding in this movie after months of practicing. They always dub two-stroke engine sounds over any movie scene with some sort of dirt bike in it. We already know about the Honda CRF DRZ though, so we don't need to go too much into detail. They are single-cylinder dual sport bikes that are definitely four stroke not two stroke the ones in this movie look pretty clapped so kind of your standard secondhand drz the last movie on the list today is the another semi-indie flick the american remake of the girl with the dragon tattoo by david fincher in this movie the protagonist Lisbeth salander played by rooney mara rides a completely custom honda cl350 scrambler slash cafe racer build the spike was built by justin kell at glory motorworks after being contacted by david fincher about building a motorcycle for this movie justin read the books in the film and was based on a built and designed motorcycle that he felt would best reflect the character herself. He landed on an older bike and a less expensive bike that could be built in the noir style of the film. The CL350 has a 325cc engine, knobby tires, upswept exhaust, and low slung handlebars. It really is checking all the neo retro urban scrambler boxes. Thanks for making it to the end of a video. What's your favorite movie motorcycle? The Batman bike or the cartoon motorcycle from Tron? Well, those don't count because they're not real. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Also, one last honorable mention, there's an R1 that is in the movie Under the Skin that I just remembered now that is actually really sweet too. Fact, Leo Fender, the founder of the iconic company Fender Guitars, could not actually play the guitar. He played the saxophone. Goodbye. Keep watching Amy Noob!